Prayer for Racial Healing by Maggie Meadows Cooper Read by Leah Martin So put to death the sinful, earthly things lurking within you. Colossians 3.5 Lurking When you hear that word, what does it make you think of? A shadowy form hiding in a dark alley? A sinister plot just waiting to be revealed? That's what comes to my mind. Merriam-Webster defines lurking as being concealed but capable of being discovered. Another definition says remaining hidden so as to wait in ambush, present in a barely discernible state, although still presenting a threat. But in Colossians 3.5, Paul uses this word to remind us of the sinful, earthly things in each of us. The truth is that we all have sin hiding away. And the tricky part is that a lot of it doesn't show up in our day-to-day. We're able to mask it many times. Can't you just picture greed, pride, jealousy, anger, dirty language, lust, and others wearing trench coats while hanging out in the shadows of our hearts? Satan is crafty, and he knows just how to trigger these things in us so that they make a grand entrance, reminding us of our own depravity. I'll think I've been doing so well as a follower of Jesus, loving people, serving, etc., then something happens, and by my response I'm reminded of just how sinful I really am. In recent months, racial tensions have been high. Black men have been killed senselessly, lives shattered, and it's heartbreaking. It should make all of us examine our hearts and how we view people of the opposite race, pray for the hidden to be revealed, and seek how the Lord would help us bring healing. The problem with racism, bias, prejudice, whichever word you like to use though, is that It's not easily discernible in every person. It's not something people like to face. And it doesn't always show itself openly. It's something that is lurking. And that makes it hard to get better. You see, I'm a white, middle-aged woman in the South. I was raised to love all people like Jesus would, and I do my best. I've had relationships through the years as a friend, big sister, a co-worker, Bible study leader, and volunteer with many in the black community. And I'm so proud to call many of them friends and love them dearly. My husband and I do our best to live out loving all people and teaching our children to do the same. But this world is broken, it's fallen, and Satan uses every opportunity to divide. I can't say there haven't been seeds planted in my heart that have produced prejudiced thoughts at times, and it makes my soul hurt to admit that. My precious friends, the only hope for healing is for all of us on both sides to pull these feelings out of the shadows and face them to pray for eyes to see each other as Jesus does, to communicate with each other, to stand up and speak out when needed, and to expose these biases for what they are, well-crafted lies created to divide us for centuries. I pray that one day soon, color will be an adjective. Until then, may we all do our best to live out 1 Samuel 16, 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we come to you broken. We desperately need your wisdom and discernment in our words and actions. Oh, Jesus, help us be courageous enough to face our own fears, prejudices, and misconceptions. Forgive us 
of these specific sins against our black brothers and sisters. Reveal what's hidden in us and help us to love people, all people, as you would. Give us courage to speak up and do the right thing, even when it's hard. Give us ears to hear and eyes to see as you do, Lord. Help us to be a light in this dark world and bring unity, healing, and forgiveness to our communities. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. <laughs>